Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Sebastian. And I'm Chiara. And as Paul already said, like we both work on M by Example. And today, yeah, we want to do something spe special. Like we want to work on a sample that we're going to publish later, but we want to create the sample live. And I personally find this always really interesting because I want to see to one thing to see like sample code. But it's a completely different thing to see how this code has been created. And so I think it's like really interesting to see the, the whole progress of what it's like to, to develop something. And that's what we're going to try to do. So today we want to implement, as many, many of you probably have been traveling here, a hotel landing page. And there, we want to show a few like really nice dynamic features, such as like filtering rooms, things like that. And while we're doing this, we want to show some of the really cool new components that have been recently added to the Enranta. Let's switch to demo. So we prepared a very basic um, page in here. So as you can see, we already have uh, imported the runtime for AMP. We have some basic uh, CSS, and we have the AMP boilerplate uh, CSS. So today, we want to build a uh, page for our hotel called the Amsterdam. The Amsterdam. So, so we did like in the, the CSS you've seen earlier. So uh, we just have a default styling for buttons because otherwise we probably won't be able to see them later on in the demo. And there's another thing that we're doing is we simply uh, use the system fonts as the default font for our web page. And I think there's a really good pattern because this ensures, like for example, you're using on iOS, you're gonna you're gonna be using Sergio on. On Android, we're going to be using Roboto. So this ensures that your website really matches into the, the current device. And the big advantage of this, like you don't need to load any additional font resources initially when the page is loaded. So this then can greatly speed up initial page load time. So we have a local web server running, which is serving uh, this page. So we can already see how it looks like. So if we load the page, so this is going to be the page we are going to build up today. So we want to pull the list of available rooms for the Amsterdam Hotel. So first thing, so I'm going to use the AMP list element in order to do that. So I'll start by importing it. And this, by the way, is, is such a useful component. But at the same time, it has such a terrible name. It's, so it's, it's so misleading, but it's not really, it's good for like, having dynamic list content, but it's also really good to, to render dynamic content. So I think a much better name would be AMP dynamic content, because that describes a lot more what, what this, this component is actually about. So I've imported the AMP list and the AMP mustache, of course. So let's, uh, let's start adding the AMP list to the page. So let's see, I have an AMP list. So AMP list offers a set of uh, layout that you can use. So we have the fixed, uh, the responsive, the fixed type layout. When the content of an AMP list is actually a list of items, we, we notice that the best layout the layout that works better is the fixed height. So this is what I'm going to use it today. I'm just going to use a fixed height here. And then as a source, I'm going to use the uh, endpoint that I mentioned earlier, uh, which provides an API um, to retrieve uh, the available uh, rooms for the Amsterdam Hotel. So this is rooms. So now that I have my AMP list, I can show on the page some information, like I can show an image. So let's import an um, image. Uh, so let's give it some width, the height, and the source. And then for each image, I can add uh, like the name of the room next to that. All right, we can see if that works now. Let's see, let's reload the page. And actually, I cannot see any rooms there. So let me go to the console and see if I have any errors. Yeah, so the console is telling me that the response must contain an array, um, an array of items. What this means is that the AMP list is expecting an object containing an array property 
with an array with the property called items. And because my endpoint is just returning a plain array, I need to go back and tell to the AMP list that my items are just inside the array that is returned. So I'm just going to use the items uh, attribute and say, just take the array that are returns. So let me see if that works now. Yeah, I can see the list of the rooms. Can you see the, the rooms there? OK. Actually, me personally, if I'm looking at them, I cannot really see those images because they are too small. So wouldn't that be great to be able to just click on those and see an enlarged version of the image? And actually, that's really easy to do with one of the newest component uh, from, the, from AMP, which is called AMP Lightbox Gallery. So let me show you how to use it. And by the way, it's a component in experiment. Um, so first thing, I'm going to import the element. So it's called amp light box gallery. And the cool thing is that it's very easy to use. Just go to the amp image element and just add light a light box attribute. And that's it. And you can also use it uh, with the AMP carousel component. So let me show to you how it looks like. Have I saved? OK, reload the page. And as you can see, I click on the image, and I see an enlarged version of the image. I can even swipe between the images I have on my page. And it gives me a gallery of thumbnails of all the uh, images in my page. So I think this, this is really like, awesome, to be honest. Like, just like you add this little attribute, and you get a fully blown Lightbox experience. And although like, one thing would be nice, because I mean, this is a, a hotel page, so I'm looking at different rooms, and I would actually like to know for each of the images like which room I'm actually looking at. OK. I think it's very easy to add a caption to images when using this uh, new component. Let me show to you. So I'm just going to go back to the AMP image element. And I can use the Alt attribute of an AMP image to specify a caption for the uh, images in the gallery. So it's, so it's, I mean, you should be adding the Alt attribute anyway and for accessibility reason. But you can also use, like, there are different ways on how you can add a caption to, to the live box. You could use the area label attribute. You could use a fig cap, figure caption element. So there are quite a few ways. OK, so now that I've added it, I can see that on the bottom, I have the name and the description of the rooms. And that, that's pretty nice. OK, so now we have the list of uh, rooms. but. We were thinking maybe the Amsterdam Hotel is going to be very busy during this conference. So we are going to go and uh, try to implement a filter of the rooms uh, based on the availability. So in order to do that, I'm very excited to use one of the uh, newest AMP component, which is the AMP Date Picker. It's probably one of the most highly anticipated components either. Like I don't know how often I heard the question, like how can I do a good date input in AMP? So again, this is an experiment. Uh, this is still in experiment. So I've imported uh, the component. And actually, let's start using it. So we have, uh, maybe I can add the uh, just uh, pick a date. And then I'm going to add the update picker. So the update so there are two types of AMP date picker. One is uh, for a single uh, date, and one is for a uh, range. So because I'm going to need the arriving and the leaving date, I'm going to use the type range. And then it requires to specify uh, two inputs. So again, in our case, we have an arriving one, and we are going to have a leaving uh, date. Let's see. We can already see how this works. As maybe you really want to see how the update picker looks like. And yeah, you can see we have. We can select an arrived date. We can select a living date. 
and that's it. As you can see on the right, you may see some errors. This is because the uh, AMD picker is still under experiment, so sometimes there are errors in the, in the console. The AMD picker also gives us a button to clear dates, so I can click on this and the dates uh, will be cleared. And I'm doing this just simply by adding the show clear dates attribute to the AMD picker element. So now that I have the AMD picker in place, I want to be able to, I want to make um, an additional request to the server and get uh, the rooms available for uh, these dates. So in order to do that, I'm going to wrap the AMD picker into a form. And as you already know, uh, forms um, are available in AMP, but they need their own uh, extensions. So let me add the AMP, the AMP form extension first. I've created these like snippets just for, for this demo, and I was like, how could I live the, with this before? It's so useful. So I highly recommend like doing this like when you're working with AMP. So our form is going to have a get method, and we are going to use uh, the same endpoints I was talking about earlier, which we already set up, um, which is able to, uh, we, can, we, we can query this endpoint to get the list of uh, rooms based on uh, availability. So then we can move the AMD picker inside the form because we want to use the inputs as inputs of the form. And, then, and we will probably need a button. So yeah, the nice thing about the date picker that it works like uh, as a simple text input. So uh, you just drop it into an AMP form and your server is able to, to receive the, the dates that the user entered. So let's see how this looks. Like now, so we have our pick, date picker, so we can pick some dates, uh, and then we have a button for check availability. But this button is not doing anything at the moment. So what we want to do now um, is take the um, response from the server request and update the list of rooms uh, on the page. So let's go back to our code. So the uh, the AMP form, so whenever the AMP form uh, returns with either a successful or uh, an error response, it emits um, an event, uh, the submit success event or the submit error. So in this case, I'm going to use the uh, submit success event to know when the response um, has returned. So I'm going to say on submit success. I want to set, the, uh, I wanna set um, a new variable by using the AMP set state. Set state. And I'm going to call this new variable, guess what, rooms. And this variable is going to contain the response of this uh, server call. So this is going to be set to the events.response. So now that I have this uh, global variable available, I want. You have a typo, actually. It's I have two O. So now that I have this variable uh, available, I want to use it as a source of my AMP list. And in order to do that, I'm going to bind the source of the AMP list to the variable rooms. This actually really cool feature of AMPList is that you can add bindings to the source element, and it has like two modes. Like one side, you can provide a new URL, which is then if, if AMP state is updated, the AMPList is going to fetch a new URL and another content. Or you can even like just simply uh, bind it to specific AMP state variables, which can be very, very powerful. OK. Actually, let's see if that works. Reload. So let's pick a date, so 26th of February to the 28th, check availability. And yeah, I have unbind is not installed. Actually, that's, that's, that's true, because I forgot to uh, import the unbind extension, which I'm going to do it now. So the unbind, let's go back, reload. Pick a date again, 26 to the 28, check the availability. And as you can see, the, room, the list of the, room, the rooms uh, is updating with the, um, with, uh, with the content of the variable rooms. 
So we can also clear the date, and then in that case, we are returning the list of all the rooms. And actually, since this hotel can be very busy during the uh, AMCONF, let me check the availability during those days. So let's say from the 14 to the 15, check the availability. And as you can see, there are no rooms available for this period. But actually, it would be nicer if we would show a message uh, to see that there are no available rooms. And I think now Sebastian can show to you how to implement this. Yeah. So the, the problem here is that like it's really important for the user to learn like there's there are no rooms available, but there's like no built-in way in AMP list on how to handle the, the empty list state. So we, we have to find find a different way to do this. And one thing that we can do is to to use uh, AMP bind again to 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 show like a, a message if if the if there are no rooms available. So let's first create the message. So something like, sorry, no rooms available. And then we're going to bind, show this message only if the list is empty. So it should be hidden by default. And I'm using the hidden attribute here. This is part of the AMP runtime. And surprise, it hides elements. But it's, it's very uh, useful for, if you combine it with actions or bindings. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to at a binding for this, so uh, so this should only like hidden should always be present if the list of rooms is not empty. So let's see the, the quotes. Cool. So let's let's try if this works. So reload the page. Initially, the mes message is not visible. Now let's check the availability during AntConf, and we see still. Uh, it's at the bottom, and this is like the setting, second annoying bit of, about Amplis. So when you, it dynamically changes its content, it doesn't resize. So basically, we have to do this, this as well. So you can take a look. We see here's an empty list still taking up all the space, which is like very ugly in this case. But this is like quite an easy way to, to fix this. And the idea is to, again, use AMP bind to, to update the height based on the number of elements. So, uh, and this is like, I only, like, it took me a while until I learned this. You can actually add bindings to, to layout attributes, such as height. So in this case, I'm going to calculate the height based on the number of elements. And in our case, if you look at our sample, we see uh, that each item has a, the same Dimension. So in this case, it's 73 pixels. So it's basically the, the height then should be 73 times the number of elements in our room. So let's see. I'm going to check the availability for AmpConf again. And we see our message is now at the correct position, and the AMP list has a height of zero. So these are two really, really interesting. Uh, best practice for when working with AMP list. First thing is to handle the empty list state, and the second one to always make sure that to adjust the height based on, on the content. So uh, this is quite nice so far. So basically what we've done is we implemented server-side filtering for our rooms list. But it would be nice to, to, uh, to be able to like, filter this list even further. For example, I was considering whether I should uh, bring my dog to, to Amsterdam. So it'd be nice to, to see if, uh, which of these rooms are, are pet friendly. So let's, let's implement a pet friendly filter, but I don't want it to have to make another request to the backend. Instead, I want to, to implement client side filtering. So uh, before we start implementing the filter, I quickly want to, to uh, highlight the, the pet friendly rooms and conveniently, our rooms object contains a field called pet friendly, which simply returns true if this room is, is pet friendly. So, and whenever a room is pet friendly, I want to print a nice pair of paws. So, we see quite a few of the rooms are pet friendly, and now we want to, to filter this. So, first thing we need is a uh, a checklist, a checkbox. So let's start with the labels saying show only pet friendly rooms. So, and then we need to define an input. 
And this is a checkbox. Let's quickly see if it's there. Yeah. And now we want to to uh, implement a, a filter based on, on, on this checkbox. So the first thing that we need to do is basically update M state based on the, the value of the checkbox. So we once again need to register to, to, to an event. In this case, it's the change event. And when the checkbox changes, we're going to set the M state and we're going to write a new variable. Uh, I'm going to write a new variable. Let's call it show pet friendly. And then the variable is the state of the checkbox, and we have to get it from the event. And in this case, the value is called checked. And we want uh, to close it. Yeah, thanks. So uh, there's one, one thing like events are super useful in AMP. However, like the naming of the value fields are, is not consistent. So you have for each of the different elements, you have to know how to access the, the correct values. And there's a really good page in the official documentation. It's called Action and Events. It lists all the different events and actions, plus how to, to use the different values, access the different values of an event. This is really useful. So if you want to start working with AMP Bind, definitely take a look at this page. So let's see, see how it works. So I'm going to reload the page. And here's another really nice trick when you want to, to debug your bind expression. So I'm going to switch on development mode by adding hash development equals one to, to, the, to the URL. And then you can access the print state function in the console. And what it does is. And you need to reload the page. Uh, thanks, Gerard. So once I'm doing this, we see initially this M state is empty, but hopefully when I change the value, my checkbox, we're not going to see now our show pet friendly value has been written to the to the M state. So this is super useful when you're uh, working with, with M bar. So now we've got the filter status in, in our M state. Now we use, need to use it to, to implement our filter. So, uh, and how we do this is like when we bind the rooms variable to in our AMP list, we, we have to filter the list of rooms. And AMP bind provides a filter operation, and it works exactly like the filter function of an, on an array in, in, in JavaScript. So basically, you provide a function which receives a room, and then based on the value of a short pet friendly checkbox, we are either going to return whether this room is actually pet friendly. So let's do this. And if we don't care about pet friendliness, we simply return true. So this means we don't want to, like, we want to see all the, all the rooms. OK, so let's see how this works. So loading my page, and I'm clicking on my checkbox, and nothing happens. And at this point, the, co the console is actually helping, helping us. So it says rooms is not defined. Now, that's true if you think about it, because uh, initially we are rendering the available rooms using the AMP list and not AMP state. So uh, the rooms variable is actually not yet initialized on, on page load. So, and we, we have to do this. And the way it's done is, is using the, the AMP state component. So this is basically an easy way to pre-fill your, your AMP state. And we're going to assign a response from our rooms endpoint to the rooms variable. And the trick here is we are using the same endpoint as for our AMP list. And this is quite a common pattern. And so basically, this ensures that the AMP list and the AMP state have a consistent state. And as we are, both components are making a, a request to the same endpoint, we can like, we benefit from uh, the AMP runtime's response caching. So even though multiple components like, specify a request to the same URL, it's going to result in only a single request. So it's, this is no problem at all. So let's see. So we're going to reloading our rooms. And yeah, we can filter by pet friendliness now. And the nice thing is even that it also works for uh, the rooms that are also filtered based on date. So, but now that you have this filter, how the height of the amplis works? Uh, yeah. Is it working? Yeah, that's true. That's, that's probably 
Yeah, so it's most likely not going to work. Let's, let's take a quick look. So uh, we see here our amp list. Once again, the height is off. And this is because the way how we, we calculate the height. Uh, in, in our code, we see that the height is, uh, is it here? We simply use the rooms variable to calculate the height, which is, of course, uh, wrong because it doesn't include uh, an additional feature, uh, filter, like in this case, the, the pet friendly filter. So, what we have to do is basically we have to put the filter every time we access a rooms variable, which feels very wrong because we're basically duplicating quite a complex expression. So, but there's like Thankfully, nowadays, it's a really easy way to, to avoid this. So uh, recently, the, the new AMP bind macro extension has been added, which basically allows you to declare functions you can call from within your bindings. And this is like such a fantastic addition because it finally makes it easy to, to write maintainable AMP bind expressions. So the way it works is you define an ID. So in this case, it's let's call it filter rooms. We don't need to provide any ar arguments because we can ex uh, macros can access AMP state. So I'm simply going to copy the whole filter expression, add it into a macro. Then every time we uh, call we, where we used rooms before, I'm simply calling our macro, which will then run our filter. So let's see if this works. So filter still works, and if we combine the multiple filters, you see the height is also calculated correctly. So wait a second. So does this mean that the filter is going to be executed all the time? That yeah, yeah, you're right. So yeah, that's that's a bit inefficient here, if you want so, because basically the, the filtering on the rooms is performed three times. So uh, yeah, that's that's not very nice. However, in this case, our data set is quite small. Like, how many rooms, different room times does a hotel usually have? 10, 20? And bind expressions actually execute really fast. So for small data sets, this isn't really a problem. So in this case, this approach, I would prefer this approach because it's a lot easier to implement. If you have a like, really large data set, then you would have to do it differently. Basically, then you have to, every time the M state is changed, so when you load in uh, new rooms, from, when you get new rooms from the backend, or when someone clicks on the filter, then you would need to, to, to update the state with the filter result. So this is a little bit, uh, takes a little bit more effort to implement, but still would be yeah, still possible. But apart from that, I think this is like a, a pretty pretty good sample page. So what we've seen is like you can do server-side filtering, client-side filtering with Unbind, and these work together. So we've seen the, the really nice new Lightbox component. It's saying you add a single attribute, and you get a really nice full-screen Lightbox experience. And then we've seen like some best practice on how you implement, uh, how, how to work with an AMP list. So, uh, Keanu, think this is now production-ready code? Uh, I think there are a couple of things we could do here. So, for example, um, when, when we load the page, if the height that I specified for the AMP list is not enough for all the items, we could use a uh, button to show more rooms. Or another thing we could do here is to have a uh, personalized Place older when loading uh, the list of rooms. Um, and what about you? What could be done here? Um, so yeah, I agree. Like, should handle all the, the corner cases, but but also like one interesting thing optimization could be here. Like at the moment when you when you reload the page, so first the page is going to be loaded, and then the AMP list component is loaded. Then this is going to fire off a request to pull in the rooms. However. Like the default number of rooms is actually really static. This, this is not very likely to change often. So in this case, it actually would make sense, more sense to server-side render the rooms. So uh, the whole page is going to load a lot faster because there isn't a second request required. And the other thing is then basically when you implement a filter, what the filter does, as soon as you click somewhere, the server-side rendered version of the rooms is hidden, and then you replace it with an, with an amp list. But apart from that, I think, well, this is pretty good. Yeah, so um, 
Uh, if you want to play around with the code that we just uh, showed today, you can check it out on, uh, on uh, Amby Example. Um, and we're done for today. So thank you all for all your attention. <laughs>